Welcome back, episode four of the bookcase build. Today, we're going to complete the sliding dovetails and get this case assembled. If that sounds interesting, stick around. Today's episode, we're going to look at these sliding dovetails here. Once I've got those cut, I'm going to assemble this entire frame and then we can start to work on the internal shelves. What I'm now doing is giving each of these panels a letter. So that's going to be A, that's going to be A, that's B, that's B, that's C, that's C, that's D, and that's D. Now that's important because all these cuts obviously need to be parallel, they need to be square and they need to be lined up. So when we look at the finished product, we get this nice crisp clean line throughout the bookcase. And I'm going to cut these as matched pairs. So I'm transferring these letters to the panels. So this panel is this end panel here, and I put an A in the corner. That A is signifying the front bottom corner of my panel. I put an A on this one here, and that's signifying the front bottom corner of this panel. So if I have my two A's together, I now know that this is the base of the panel, and that these edges here I butted together are the front faces. And if you remember, we put the front faces together as we were routing through to prevent chip out on this front face. So with all our panels marked, A, B, C, D, and all the letters indicating my front face and the base of the panel, it's just a matter of now of working out where I need to put these dovetails. I know that the first base of my first shelf is 160 millimeters, and I know that the panels are 18 millimeters, so therefore 160 plus half of 18, which is nine, equals 169 millimeters. So my first shelf needs to be 169 millimeters to the center. So 169 shows me now where the center point is for each of these. But remember, that's a center point from the top of this base panel. And we know that these end panels are still oversized by 12 millimeters because we've not yet trimmed them down. But on this internal panel here, we've already cut the dovetails, so the shoulder gives me a good reference point. So I'm going to measure up and set up 169 millimeters from the shoulder on the dovetail. I'll lock that in, set the MFT off the cut, and then batch all of those out. Once I've done that, I'll come back in and we'll repeat the activity for this middle shelf. And that way guarantees that all these centers are going to be perfectly aligned and therefore give us best chance that all these shelves are perfectly aligned once we assemble the final unit. Now don't make the mistake that I just made. I measured up 169 but I took it from the end of the board and we know that we want to go from the shoulder of the dovetail. So that line I've now just carefully squared off is in the wrong place. So I'm going to remeasure that coming from the end of the dovetail, I give myself a mark of 169, which is there. I now line up that mark with the end of my board. And I've just got the Inker fence set up as a stop, so that's allowing me to dial that mark in pretty well. And I've got a row of dogs here at the back just keep me square on the table lock everything into place make sure it's all nice and tight and now I can make my mark that I know I need okay so I've now got my mark so I now need to set up my router and line up to that center point While I've got these boards together, I just want to mark out the end panel for its final cut. Remember, this is oversized, and we're leaving it oversized to make sure everything lines up, but now I can mark this for final length, and the final length is actually cut to that shoulder, the inside shoulder of the dovetail on the panel. So I'm just going to take a sharp marking knife, and I'm going to slide up against the shoulder of my dovetail, and just make a small incision here, and that's what I now need to cut for final width. And I'll do the same on the other end as well. 
And after we've cut all these, we'll come with the track saw and just trim this panel to final length. This panel is now done on the bottom cut, so I can take this one out of the way for the time being. And now I want to flip this panel over. And you'll see that my B mark is now exposed. So I find the other internal panel with a B and I butt that to here. Push that up against my dog so everything's nice and square. Clamp it in again. Make sure it's all butted up against oop, my fence at the bottom there. And now I can repeat the cut. And then what you end up with are these two dovetails nicely lined up through the panel. Now, I, am, I was concerned about the weakness of this centre joint, but that's really still quite firm, so I've not got any problems and issues with that. So I don't need to do anything special here. So I'm going to batch out the rest of these panels. We'll lay out and cut the middle one in exactly the same way. I'll trim the end panels down to size using that mark that we've just made. We'll come back together and look at assembling this beast. All the panels are now completed. I've cut all the dovetails in all the positions on all the panels and I've trimmed the end panels down to size. So the next job is I want to look at the joinery on the end panels and the base panels and for that we're going to use dominoes. I think I've mentioned a few times I was also going to use pocket hole screws to clamp it together. However, now I've got it laid out, I've actually got clamps that are long enough, so we're not using pocket holes. We'll use dominoes and then we'll clamp it uh, while it dries. If you've not seen us use a domino, check out the video now. We did a series on the domino and how to use it, but I'll walk you through the setup for this particular project. These are my base and top panels here, and here is my end panel. We're using 6mm by 40mm dominoes. The reason we're using the 6mm dominoes is this is 18mm thick material and a good rule of thumb is make your tenon around about a third of the thickness of your material. So 18 divided by 3 is 6mm. We're going to have one domino here and one domino here onto the internal face of our panels and obviously they correspond to dominoes set into the end of our end panels. So I've set this for 9mm and 9mm is exactly half of 18mm so all my dominoes will be in the centre of this material here. I've set it for a depth of cut of 15mm. Remember, these are 40 millimetres, so ideally you'd have 20 millimetres into one piece of material and 20 millimetres into the other piece of material. This is 18 millimetre board. If I cut through 20 millimetres, it goes all the way through. So I'm using 15 millimetres on this board and I'll use 25 millimetres on this board and that will give me a good joint without blowing through the entire board. To line things up we're going to use these stops here on the domino itself so I'll reference against this internal edge here of the rebate and the front edge of the board. We will make the front domino a perfect fit here and the back domino we will cut on this slightly wider setting here and that just gives me a little bit of room as I line up this back one just in case there's any variances on the rebate where we did the routing. Obviously, when I reference on this face here, I don't have much reference surface on the domino itself. So we're just going to drop in the back foot just to give me a little bit more stability. You can see the workpiece just sliding around a little bit there, just, as I, just with the pressure of the domino. So I'm just going to clamp this into position as well, just to give me a bit of extra security. And we'll go ahead and we'll make all the cuts on the top and the base panel. And that's it, so all our cuts are now done. When I did the end panels, I referenced off the outside edge, and that's because I want the outside edge to be flush to the end of the base panels. So I referenced off the end point here and this face there, and if you do that, then that will line up perfectly. So we're ready for the glue up. All the panels are cut, everything's to the right size, everything's nice and neat and square, all the dominoes are cut, joinery is ready. I've got my glue. I've got my spreading stick, I've got my clamps in position ready to clamp this up and I've laid out the panels so I can work on them, everything's orientated correctly so it's no harder than folding up these panels to make the joints. So here's the plan, 
We're going to fix the end panels on that first of all. I'll then rotate it towards me. I've got my second panel here ready to go and we'll fix that into position on what will be the top I think. Then we'll clamp all that into place and then that gives us a framework for the panel. Then I'll put the central panel in place and clamp that and then we'll allow that to dry for a few hours and then I'll put the final two internal pieces in place. Let's get going. Okay, so that's done. Just want to check for square. It all looks pretty good. Yep. I'm now going to drop in this middle panel, which is a B and a C panel, which is this one. So B is on that side, C is on this side, so we now need to drop this one into the centre.
So, if you remember in the earlier episode, I was talking about the glue expands the joint a little bit. That's what's happening here. So you've got to be quite brave and bang through it. But we know the joints are good because we tested those as we cut them. Okay, nearly there. And we knock that in until we are flush. And we have a nice tight joint, which is what we have. Clean the glue up as we go. It's going to be quite hard to get into these joints once the everything's assembled to sand it. So it's easier now. Damp cloth, not a wet cloth. Wet cloth will take all the glue out for you, and that's no fun. Check myself a square again. That's good. If you weren't square at this phase, you can actually put some twist in to the cabinet left and right. You adjust the clamps at the top and just square that up. So you have got some room to maneuver. Once we lock in these base panels and these middle panels, obviously that's rigid at that point. But that's okay for now. That's good enough. So I'm just going to drop a clamp top and bottom. Don't actually need to. This is a quite a tight joint that we've made. But just why not while we've got them? And there you have it. All that measuring and all that work paid off. Everything's nice and square. Everything's nice and tight. Good. So that's it for today. Once this has dried off, I'll take these clamps off and I'll drop the remaining two internal panels in place. Exactly the same way of doing it. And I'll clamp that and then let the entire thing dry overnight. Next episode, we'll cut, measure and fit the internal shelves and then we can start looking at fitting the back to this beast. See you next time.